escape artist Bill Shirk is handcuffed and chained inside a plexiglass coffin. Let's go, people! He will be buried alive under seven tons of mud and cement. Hey. Then he will attempt to break free before he suffocates and make his way to the surface. Shirk is only the second escape artist to perform this stunt. The first died in the attempt. But without warning, something appears to go terribly wrong. Take him out! Take him out! Onlookers are shocked. They quickly bring in a backhoe to dig him up. Has this stunt taken another life? The nightmare occurs just minutes from downtown Indianapolis. This center of Midwestern stability is also home to one of Indiana's most outrageous and daring radio and TV personalities, Bill Shirk. <laughs> it is the crazy Bill Shirk show. With this daredevil of the airwaves says he was inspired by legendary escape artist Harry Houdini. To keep the tradition alive, Shirk has attempted ever more outrageous stunts. I enjoy doing this. There is a certain rush that you have. You say you're going to do something and people go, oh, you can't do that, and you do it. And that's the satisfaction. No one thought Bill would survive being run over by a train. But he did. The 45-ton locomotive came at me on the track, missed my nose by two-tenths of an inch, and I was almost killed in the two-fifths of a second. Bill has also wiggled out of a straitjacket while hanging from a helicopter. Escaped unscathed from a tank of man-eating sharks. And survived three days and nights underground in a coffin, accompanied by a Burmese python and two tarantulas. Then Bill read about the tragic death of fellow escape artist, Amazing Joe Burris. For a Halloween stunt, Amazing Joe was handcuffed and chained inside a plexiglass coffin. Then he was buried under seven tons of mud and concrete. But the coffin was crushed under the weight of the dirt and cement. Rescuers frantically dig to save him. By the time they reach Burris, it's too late. He had suffocated. Uh, he kept Houdini's legend alive. And I know Bill was saddened by the news. But at the same time, he couldn't help but feel challenged to perfect Amazing Joe's stunt. Although many escape artists have been hurt performing stunts like I do, I had never done one where a guy had been killed. Bill also sees this as an incredible opportunity to promote his radio stations on Halloween. Bill's stunt coordinator, Melvin Benn, is not enthusiastic about Bill's idea. I was very shocked that Bill even wanted to try to perform that stunt, and I really had bad convictions about it. I just didn't see any way, really, that, you know, this could be done. Despite Mel's concern, Bill goes ahead with his plans on Halloween. A giant hole is dug in the radio station's back lot. Off-duty police officer Ricky Clark handcuffs Bill and chains his wrists and ankles. Oh, that's a little tight. Okay. That's all right, that's all right. Nothing you can do about it now. It's fine, fine. Don't worry about it. I am concerned because of the mere fact that uh, somebody else has done it and, and they were not successful at it. You ready, buddy? I'm ready. Now, Bill is lifted inside the casket. All right, all right, Bill Church! Paramedics wait nearby as the casket is locked. Lower him slowly, people. And then lowered into the grave. Very slowly. But the casket doesn't settle into the grave like it should. And, uh, That's as far as it's going to go, right? That end needs to be trimmed off. Bring him up! It is brought back up so the hole can be altered. Go this way. This way! Bill now has one last chance to back out. You all right, Bill? You want to keep going? but he gives yeah. the signal to go ahead with the stunt. Next, will the Halloween curse haunt escape artist Bill Shirk? Indiana escape artist Bill Shirk is on the brink of doing a stunt that has already killed one man. 
It's also the anniversary of the death of his hero, legendary escape artist Harry Houdini. The plexiglass coffin in which Bill is chained and handcuffed is lowered into a seven-foot hole. Stay on Let's go, people. A cement mixer now pours three and a half tons of concrete into the hole. Now the casket is under seven tons of mud and cement. Suddenly, something appears to go wrong. Onlookers are unsure if this is all part of Bill's act, or if he's really in trouble and possibly dead. But stunt coordinator Melvin Benn realizes the plexiglass coffin has collapsed. Plexiglass itself could have come in and cut Bill's head off, and I was just praying that we weren't going to be digging up a corpse. Backhoe operator Larry Batson immediately starts digging next to the grave site. He can't dig into the wet cement because the backhoe's bucket could chop Bill's body in half. I didn't want to move the bucket down through where the, the class thing, because I could have hit him. I could have killed him with the bucket. But one, you know, I fear this is just a formality. You know, I fear he's dead. The backhoe can only dig so far. The rest of the work must be done by hand. Then. Rescuers carry Bill to the waiting ambulance, where they make sure his air passages are clear and give him oxygen. This modern-day Houdini escapes without serious injury. But how did he do it? His escape began after the casket was covered in dirt. So they cover the lid, and then I go to work on the handcuffs and the chains and the leg irons and everything, and then I go to work on the coffin, and all of a sudden the coffin starts creaking and creaking. Bill still thought he could escape the casket and make it to the surface before anything went wrong. As the cement was being poured, Bill pulled the shirt over his head to cover his eyes and nose. I'm down here. I have formulated like a baby <laughs> with my shirt over my head and everything, somewhat of an air pocket. But then came what Bill claims was an unplanned catastrophe. The coffin collapsed. I was very lucky to survive. It was without warning. All of a sudden, crack. The whole top of the lid of the coffin just cracked. I could hear it crack. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see anything. And then the dirt came down with the cement and thud. And I thought I was dead. Bill says the shirt created an air pocket over his head, which kept him from suffocating. What went wrong to cause this near tragedy? Bill and his team did several dry runs of the stunt to ensure his safety. But it had rained the night before, and the dirt was heavier than they had calculated. It was the straw that broke the plexiglass. I have tried to warn Bill. I didn't want him to really do the stunt, primarily because the stunt had never been rehearsed or practiced on wet ground. This is one mistake Bill won't make again. While he's determined to keep the Houdini legend alive, he will never again perform the lethal seven-ton cement dirt burial escape. Not even Bill Shirk is crazy enough to pull this stunt again.